in the mind of his father. Even though he, it, it wasn't his will, he, as far as he wanted to give his, thank you my father, my king, for the correction. He knew he had to die. But during this time, he felt that struggle. But he stayed in the father's mind. He asked for his will. The will comes from what? The mind. And he put the mind of Yahuwah before his will. And this is what we need to do. Body of the Messiah. Verse 40. And he come unto the disciples and find them asleep and said unto Kapha, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? And, you know, it's, it's interesting because it's not that Kapha and the disciples were wicked. But what this shows, brothers and sisters, is that there are times in the body of the Messiah where there's certain times when we need each other. But there's some of us who are sleeping. That's powerful. So what Yahushua experienced, everything in his life, is a picture of all of us. Do you see this? When he was betrayed, when he was rejected, when he was forsaken. Do you realize it was a picture of all of us together going through the sufferings with him? This is why Shaul said that we were to consider ourselves being dead with him, dead to sin, baptized unto his death. We were to consider those things. Verse 41, he said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. But the flesh is weak. What did he meant by that? When you have the mind of Yahuwah. Please help me my father my king. If you are not careful. If you allow your carnal mind. To interfere. It will come to a point. If you do not stay in Yahuwah's mind. Your inner man will venture back into the carnal man. Do you understand? That's why Yahushua he that excuse me, that's why Yahushua said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Do you understand? You we as his body, we have to stay in his mind. Verse 42 He went away again the second time. And prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, your will be done. The cup, the sufferings that he had to bear. That was a hard thing. But Yahuwah, our Heavenly Father, strengthened Yahushua. And he will do the same for us. Why? Because we're his body. See, Yahushua was stayed in the mind of him. Verse 43, and he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. See, wait a minute. Thank you, my father, my king. That goes back to the parable he spoke. See, Yahushua was persistent. He wasn't babbling back and forth to our heavenly father, but he was consistent. In his prayer life. Verse 45. Then come he to his disciples. And said to them. Sleep on now. And take your rest. Behold the hour is at, the hour is at hand. That the son of man is betrayed. Unto the hands of sinners. Rise. Let us be going. Behold he is at hand. That doeth betray me. You see this? And there are times, all of us who have experienced these things in the body of the Messiah, where there was people within the body who slept on us. 
This is what Yahushua experienced. He loved his apostles. Even though there were certain times when he needed them, at that time, they were not there. They were there physically, but spiritually they were not, as they were supposed to be. But they grew. And this, these are the things that we are experiencing. There are times when many of us are not standing in the gap for one another as we should. My brothers and sisters. Thank you, my father, my king. Now let's go to Luke, the 22nd chapter. Again, looking at the prayers of Yahushua. This is powerful. For those of you who choose to really see it. Because this is one of the things that are hindering us. Body of the Messiah. We have to allow Yahushua to be manifested even in our prayer life. You understand? Luke chapter 22, starting at verse 39. Listen, my brothers and sisters. And he came out, Yahushua, speaking, speaking of Yahushua. And he came out and went as, as he was wont to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. So this is the same scenario, but we're seeing it at a deeper vantage point. Listen. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that you enter not into temptation. So he was encouraging them and warning them that they were so that they would not go into temptation to, to stay focused in the mind of you. This is why he told them to pray. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed. Saying, Father, if you be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your, your will be done. There are times when Yahushua and our Father Yahuwah assigns us to a certain task. Listen, body, body of the Messiah, listen. Because many of you, all, well, all of you, thank you, my Father, my King, all of you are experiencing this. There are times when Yahuwah puts us in certain positions that there's struggle to the point where we do not want to, we don't know if we can go on. But if you stay in his mind, he will strengthen you as he did Yahushua. Thank you, my father, my king. Listen. Brothers and sisters. He said. Let's look at it again. Verse 42. Saying father if you be willing. Remove this cup from me. Nevertheless not my will. But yours be done. And there appeared a Moloch. Or messenger unto him from heaven. Strengthening him. You see this. And I don't know about you all, but there are times when, me personally, I'm going through things. And when Yahuwah leads me to pray about it, there are times when I begin to feel strengthened. This is what you are experiencing, those of you who are experiencing the same thing. This is why we are, it's commanded for us to pray. It's an essential, it's a spiritual essential to do. Because there are times when you're going to need to be Strengthen. Verse 44. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. See, Yahushua, he felt it. And he was persistent in prayer. Let's learn from our Messiah. It says that when he rose up from prayer, and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. You see this? And said unto them, why sleep you? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Can you picture, can you see this? Yahushua, disappointed. Just like at times when we, as the body of the Messiah, are at times we are disappointed with each other. But 
again, the, the whole account of Yahushua is showing you him, a picture of our leader, but it's showing a picture of all of us, us being his body, literally speaking. Verse 47, and while he yet spoke, behold, a multitude. And he that was called Yehuda, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Yahushua to kiss him. And, and don't many of us, we have experienced that. Where there are certain times when we have felt a sense of us being betrayed. People who would laugh and smile in our faces when in, when in all actuality, it's not true love there. This is what Yahushua experienced. This is what he was preparing us for to understand, my brothers and sisters, that we were going to experience his sufferings. We were going to experience the things that he experienced. It hurt him. Just like it hurt, it hurt us. When these sufferings come to us. This is why we have to remember the prayers of Yahushua. That's powerful. So even though he endured that, he had to be strengthened. Let's go to Luke chapter 14, my brothers and sisters. And let's look at this account again from a different vantage point. Still harmonizing together, but a different vantage point. Mark chapter 14. Starting at verse 32. It says, And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit you here while I shall pray. And he take with him Kapha and Yahukanah, excuse me, Kapha and Jacob and Yahukanah, and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death tarry you or wait you here and watch so he needed his disciples do you see this just like we have a need for each other there's a need that we all should have for one another it says that he went forth a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, as it says, interprets father, Abba, all things are possible unto you. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but your will be done. That's powerful, brothers and sisters. Because in our lives, there are times when we don't want to go through certain things. But then it's good to stay in Yahuwah's mind to understand. That it must be so for our growth. Yahushua, he even stated in the scriptures that he, he, help me my father, my king. He stated in the scriptures that he should be perfected. Yahushua had to grow. Is there not a picture of us as the body of the Messiah growing into that perfect man? Even though we know our Messiah is our Heavenly Father after His kind. Not our Heavenly Father, but He was Yahuwah after His kind. The only begotten Son of Allah. But He had to go through the stages of being perfected. Just like us in His body must do so. Verse 37. And He, and he come and find them sleeping. And said unto Kapha, Shama'un, sleep you? Could not you watch one hour? See, the, the thing is about Kapha, he, Yahushua, had high expectations. So there are times when even in the body of the Messiah, there are certain ones who are stronger and more mature than others, that there are times when they are, they are a disappointment. Do you see this? At points in our lives, Yahushua experienced these type of things. There are times where people will deny us as they denied him. All the emotions that Yahushua felt, we are feeling them. 
all the sufferings that he experienced, we're experiencing them spiritually because we're his body. Verse 38, he says, watch you and pray. Lest you enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. See, the mind of Yahuwah is ready for us to operate in it if we choose to. How many of us are praying for his will in our lives? Really? So that his will can be manifested in the earth. In our lives. How many of us, of us are doing that? But let us grow. Brothers and sisters. Listen. Verse 39. And again he went away. And prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned. He found them asleep again. For their eyes were heavy. Neither knew they. What to answer him. You see this? And we know Yahushua was not pleased. But he understood. Because his father revealed to him what was happening. Listen. And he come the third time and said unto them, sleep on. Sleep on now. And take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up. Let us go. Look, he that betrayed me is in hand. So Yahushua knew. By our Heavenly Father revealing to him what was going to happen. And he was led to pray so that he'll be strengthened for the event that was about to take him, excuse me, that was about to take place. You see this, my brothers and sisters. Let's look at John chapter 17. And many of you are familiar with it, but let's look at it. John chapter 17. As we look at the prayers of our Messiah. Oh, excuse me. Thank you, my Father, thank you for your revelations. Listen here, my brothers and sisters. He says, starting at verse 1. These words spoke Yahushua and lifted up his eyes to heaven. And said, Father, the hour is come. He says, glorify, lift, lift me up. Lift up your son, that your son also may glorify or lift you up. That's powerful. You realize that's what our father is doing with us? He's lifting us up so that we will lift him up. Where are Yahushua's body now? See the Messiah, but see the body of, the, of his true elect ones. Listen. He says, as you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know you, the only true Alayam, the Almighty, and Yahushua, the Messiah, whom you have sent. So salvation, to know him, to have his mind in his son's mind, to have Yahuwah in his son, Yahushua, as our inheritance, they are, to, they are the ultimate treasure. Do you see this? To possess them, to have them. They are the true prize. Thank you, my father, my king. Listen. He says, I have, I've glorified, I esteemed you on the earth. I have finished the work which you've given me to do. Listen. And now, oh father, he says, glorify or, or esteem you me with your own self, with the esteem which I had with you before the world was. And we know that the Father and the Son were together. We know the Son was with his heavenly Father. He says, I have manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world, as far as the world system. He says, yours they were, and you gave them me, and they have kept your word. Do you see this? The Father has given an inheritance, which is us, which is his body, to his Son. He says, now they have known that all things whatsoever you have given me are of you. 
For I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from you. Do you see that? And they have believed that you did send me. What Yahushua is, is what he is specifying to his heavenly father. Do you realize this? This is the whole salvation process. All of the disciples, the whole body of the Messiah will experience this. To believe that the Father sent him. To receive his words, which is the words of our Heavenly Father. To receive his name. To know him. These, this is the spiritual bread, the spiritual fish, the spiritual uh, egg. This is the spiritual needs that we need. For our salvation. The Ruach HaKadosh. This is what we need. The mind of him. Listen my brothers and sisters. Please. It says. Excuse me. He says to his heavenly father. He says. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. But for them which you have given me. For they are mine. That's powerful. You, can you feel the passion here? Yahushua is claiming all of us. Do you see this? We belong to him and his heavenly father. Verse 10, he says, And all mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I am glorified, I am lifted up in them. Do you see that? My brothers and sisters, do you see that? When we allow him to be manifested and to be seen through our vessels, do you realize that he is being lifted up? That's when he's truly being seen. Not just a, a facade. Listen here, it says, it says, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. He says, set apart, Father, keep through your own name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. See, Yahushua was asking for the unity. And it's, and it's happening. This is what our Heavenly Father is doing. He's bringing us all together. But, the, but it's going to be those who are going to be separated among us. You see this? He says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those that you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. We have to understand and realize that there will be casualties in this walk. There will be some that shall be lost. But Yahushua experienced it. You see this? He says, and now come I to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. How many of you have the joy of Yahushua, even though you're going through your trials and tribulations? To have his true joy inside of you, despite his sufferings that you are experiencing. Thank you, my father, my king. Listen. He says, I have given them your word. And the world have hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And what Yahushua was saying is he's not a part of this world system. And so when we receive the Father's word and we are born again, we begin to become disconnected from this world system. And as a result of that, my fellow bodies of the Messiah, you're going to be hated. For those of you who are truly being disconnected from this world system does not mean that we are not to interact amongst the people that surrounds us. But as far as the, the desires of this life, Yahuwah is beginning to cleanse us of these things. To prepare us for his kingdom. Listen, my brothers and sisters. He says, I pray not, 
I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil, from the trouble. Because Yahushua recognized that his body was going, even though he was going to his father, his body was going to have to still endure. Which was his disciples and his future members, which is us. For those of us who are faithful. We have to endure. Do you see this? He says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Separate them or sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. See, his truth will separate us. When his truth really comes, it will separate us. Listen. He says, as you have sent me into the world. Listen now to this revelation. As you have sent me into the world or the world system. Even so have I also sent them into the world or this world system. See, when Yahushua left, he left his body behind. His spiritual body, which is us. He left us behind, but he's working with us. Him and his father. Do you realize Yahushua is suffering with us still? He's ruling well by his heavenly father, but do you realize he feels what we feel? And he's waiting for that latter rain. He's waiting for us to be mature, for us to grow into that full stature of him. You see this, my brothers and sisters? Mm. He says, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. That's powerful. Do you see this? Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's powerful. My brothers and sisters. We as the body of the Messiah need to continue to grow in, the, in our Messiah and his Heavenly Father. And to consider the prayers of Yahushua. I love you all.